if there's one thing I've got, it's slot one CPUs. And they come in a variety of flavors. Um, we have some bare Pentium 2s. We have a bare Celeron. But most of them come with integrated heat sinks. And some aren't too bad. This is a P2 400, and it's out of an old Dell. Light, and the heat sink's not obtrusive, doesn't get in the way. We've got, for instance, this bad boy out of a gateway, and this is a 650. It's a P3 650. And most of the gateways came with power supplies that drew air up and over the heat sink and then out the back. And again, it's not too bad. Occasionally we get a monster, like from this Dell. No fan, but like an average Dell, it's very much ducted, just like the gateway that draws the air up and over or straight over the heat sink. And this is a P3500. Large, but not too much. Then we have this monster. We have this bad boy. You can't even really see the CPU but for the heat sink. And it's right on the other side. This is only a Pentium 2 333. And yeah, as you can see, there's really no way that we're going to be able to plug this into a slot one motherboard. It doesn't fit. Everything's in the way. How the heck did that happen? Well, I'll tell you. This CPU and heatsink specifically came from, well, it was a very much trashed and salvaged computer in the junkyard. And the motherboard slot was actually at an angle. And it slid into an angled slot one. And I had never seen anything like that before or since. Now, that being the case, I can take the CPU off this heatsink, just a couple of screws, but then I've got a CPU without a heatsink. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to cut this heatsink essentially in half. And we started earlier, but I wanted to finish it up on video and just show how we're going to cut it right here. And we're going to essentially save the top half of this heatsink and drill some holes for fan. And we're going to make a nice usable Pentium 2 333 out of this monstrosity. So let's get to work, shall we? Some of the tools of today's video will be a socket screwdriver with, don't even ask me how, a so an actual um, bit that came with it that fits perfectly in these archaic and super secret old screw heads. It fits right in there and it's coming right out. How's that for luck? So we're going to get all these out. We'll get that heat sink off. We'll get these off. And expose our CPU. Ancient screws. But we're going to keep these and set them aside because that's how everything's going back together. Then we have our heat sink, which we have scored previously. And we did cut through right to about there. Now, it's pretty beefy and it's aluminum. The CPU itself is standard. A little heat paste here. And then this is an actual integrated spreader that connects to the CPU itself. And then everything goes together. So we're going to set this aside. We won't need this for a while. We'll show putting it all together when the time is right. Setting that aside, how are we going to cut it? We're going to use our trusty Dremel, and this time we're going to use a metal cutting wheel. 
My first mistake in trying to cut this was to use a standard uh, stone wheel, which is just a basic cutting wheel, like for screws or nuts or something like that. It's really not designed for cutting metal of this length and this thickness. We're going to give this a try. I just picked this up today. This is kind of a neat attachment to the Dremel because it pops off without having to actually unscrew the actual attachment. It's sort of a new sort of a new attachment to Dremels. I'm used to the old school one where you have to actually unscrew it and then lock it. And then this actually locks in place. How cool is that? Right there. Metal cutting wheel. And hopefully these work. Some clamps. We're going to clamp it to our work table here. Just a plastic work table that if I cut it, I don't care. So here's the excess, and here's what we're keeping. smooth, burrs are gone, and at this point, we put some heat, heat paste in there, but just for now, just for now we can see how we basically turn this into something that's a little more easy to use and that will actually fit on our slot one motherboard. Of course, we'd have to remove the brackets, but at the same time, it's not going to interfere with any of the caps or anything else on the board. So we went from this to this, just with a Dremel. Is it the neatest cut? No. Is it smooth and I won't cut myself? Yes. Could I drill holes in these fins and attach a fan, a small fan, which actually on some of these older Pentium 2s, they get hotter than you would suspect. So I don't think that would be the worst thing on earth to go ahead and do that. So there we have it, folks. Cut down the heat sink to size off an old retro PC, make everything a little more usable. And there we go, a usable Pentium 2 with a usable heatsink.